Hi, my name is Ben Chimwin, and in this fifth part of our video series, we'll explore more about the network pathfinding. Specifically, we want to look at how do we use the shortest path that the Jaguar T library has provided us. How do we use this foreign agent so it actually visits uh, the different parts of our network? So if we say, I want to go from this node vertex to this node vertex, how do we make our truck agent actually jump there and then visit each edge bit by bit, animated, going through it at a certain speed, um, and then arriving at this point. How do, we, how do we do this in an elegant way? So let's get started. We recently talked about how the Jaguar T library provides the shortest path. A bit of trickery here, but essentially what it does is it creates a linked list, a sequential list of A network markup elements, i.e. a linked list of nodes and paths one by one and it also it puts it into a pair so it also provides indication if this is a path network markup element in which direction should you actually move for example here should you move from left to right or from right to left now what we do actually in this example model is once we have this list we give the entire list to our truck so let's have a look at how we set up the truck agent Simple movement agent, it has a collection of elements to visit. So this is exactly what we just prepared. It is a linked list of network markup elements paired with a boolean. The key is the actual markup element and the value provides direction. If we, if the network markup element is an actual node, i.e. vertex, it will be null. But if it's for a path, i.e. edge, true will mean forward from the start to the end of the path and false will mean backward that's just you can change that that's just how i set it up now one thing that is very important to understand here is the actual pathfinding and graph theory works that movement happens only in path nodes do not have movement you just basically you are there in a graph theory world, nodes are always point nodes. Any logic went beyond that and said, we should have aerial nodes as well, because sometimes reality is like that. But if you use this philosophy, you should not expect to be able to move through nodes unless you do it manually, you can do whatever you like. But as part of the movement through the network and finding the shortest path, you should not have a rectangular node or an area node in the middle and expect to move through it. What does happen is that it will just jump there. So if I move from here to here, you will see that the agent jumps here and immediately leaves the node and then starts movement only on the path. It never actually moves through the node. Very important distinction to have. All right, so how does it work? We have our list of elements to visit, and this is what we actually fill the truck with. We call this F start movement with our linked list. The F start movement expects that linked list, and all it's doing is basically just filling our elements to visit with whatever it's given, and then starts the next element. So it basically, the truck has a list of things to visit now, and the f start next element function takes the um, the first element that you want to work on and turns that into the v current element that is again one of the pairs so that is what you want to work on right now so you go into the uh, elements to visit a couple of sanity checks here but you take out the first the oldest element to visit turn it into the current element you want to do this now and then something happens. We go into that pair, V current element, get first gives us the network markup element. And then we call this function f get my enter block. Now what is that doing? When we talked about our uh, model hierarchy, we did explore a little bit a couple of these uh, functions where we're using errors and I said 
you do this to enforce that all inheriting agent types actually implement this correctly. We do the same thing with the fgetMyEnderBlock. This function returns an enter block from the process modeling library, so one of those guys down here, but not in the a network markup element. It is actually implemented in each of the final agent types. Point node, rectangular node, polygonal node, and path. Because each of those have an actual flowchart block that we want to use. So for the point node, the fgetMyEnter block will return this arrive enter block. So let's assume your very first element is a point node. What will happen is that we the truck pushes itself into that enter block and will start the process at that point node. And here the magic of agent base comes in. Now you can do whatever you like. You can be as complex as you like in terms of behavior, process flow, whatever. I'm using the simple most uh, setup where I'm literally just saying, dear truck, when you arrive here, this jump is placed, not move to, but jump to the network element that is representing this point node agent, i.e. jump to the P my point node, which is just a point node. So it will jump into whatever point node this would be. It will just jump there and then it's done. And it will depart the point node by just calling itself again the f start next element method. And now the other code should make sense as well because now we are basically archiving our the job that we've just done. We'll add the previous point node to the elements done. Then we check if we have more stuff to do, more work to do, and we'll repeat what we did previously. So we just keep on visiting the next and the next sequentially until we come to the end. If there are no more elements to visit, then we are done. And we call this reset function because your job is done. Then. So if you arrive at a point node, you just jump there. If you arrive at a polygonal node, we do the same thing. You just jump to your polygonal node and rectangular node, same trick. But again, in here, you could implement any other capability that should happen while you are at one of those nodes. You can do whatever you like. Now, how do we do the actual animation on a path? We do the same thing conceptually. The truck just ticks off elements, and if the next element is a path, it does exactly the same thing. It pushes itself into the path's arrival enter block. But as you can see, the process flow is a little more involved. And again, this is, I think, the, min the most simple, minimal example. You can make this more complex. But what this is doing conceptually is that if you're moving from here to here, for example, and we are looking at the path in the middle, what it's doing conceptually is that the agent will start at this point here on the right hand side and will then be animated and move along this path to the end point of that path. Another example, if we go from here to here, let's look at the path up here. This is actually made up of two segments, as you can see. So it's literally following those segments and it's actually animated going along that path. So your path can be as complex as you like, the movement will still work. But how does it work? You arrive at the path agent and the very first thing is we again jump to the start point of your path as prescribed by the root finding. So what we actually do is we go into our current element pair that we, you know, we're ticking off at the moment, and we check get second is that boolean second value. We check should it be going forward from the start point of the path to the end point of the path, or should you go going going backward from the end point to the start point, relative to how the path was drawn. Remember that little bit. All depends. You can draw the path any way you like, but with this code set up, it will always work. The truck will always move in the right direction. So we're jumping to either the source of the path or the target of the path. 
And then it is a question of moving along the path from the source to the target or from the target to the source. So we just make this distinction here. Are you moving forward or backward? And we have a little local variable of the current segment. That's a counter because a path is actually made up of one or more segments and we want our agent to move along those segments clearly, not just in a straight line. And we do this with this little loop here. So we, let's say we are moving forward. What we do is we actually call the move to in time function on the truck, which will tell the agent to not move in the AnyLogic network. That is the conceptual leap now. We actually tell it to just move in free space and pretend to move in the network. And we are saying, please move to the end point of the current segment. So we split up a path, for example, if we had a path like this, this would be a path with three, three segments. Let's say we move forward, i.e. from the source to the target. We say, please move along in a straight line from the source to the end of the first segment. And then that is this first move to, we move to the end of the first segment. Then we check, are there more segments that you need to do? If so, just repeat and keep moving segment after segment in a straight line until you reach the end the end of the last segment, nothing more to do. And then you basically depart and do the same thing that you've done before arriving at the next node. Now, how fast should you actually be moving? We need to split up our path into the, into the segments. And we want to find out how long should it take to move there. So we specify a delay time for each segment with this little custom function where we're saying, what is the length of our segments in pixels? There's a little function for that to get that in relation to the total length of the entire path. So oops, if we would move, if we would be moving along this last segment of the path, that would probably be what a quarter of the total length. So we get the ratio of that, that is our ratio here. And multiply it by the total duration that the total path, moving along the total path would be. And the total duration is simply the truck speed or the length of the entire path divided by the truck speed. Make sure you get your units correct. Um, but here again, you can work differently. You can give your truck different speeds, whatever. But with this simple setup, we say each segment will take X seconds. And then we tell the agent, please move to the end of that segment using the delay time calculated up here. It's a little local variable here. So it will take exactly that amount of time. And that means that our truck, when it moves through the network, always moves with the same speed along the edges of our network. And that's all there is to it. it. The only other difference is if we're moving backward, backward relative to how the path was drawn, it's not the agent actually moving backwards, then the whole setup is reversed. So we're basically counting down from the last segment to the first, and we would be moving not from left to right here, but we would be moving from here through the last segment, then the middle segment, and then the first segment. So that's all there is to, to actually moving. The fundamental concept to understand is that the movement that we do is completely detached from the network. It is purely working in free space using the agents representing the network. And the pathfinding is using, is using JGraphT. So let's summarize the whole thing. We draw a network in any logic. It can be as simple or complex as you like, any shape, any form, you draw it however you like. With code, we translate that into an agent representation. 
We have agents for each node and agents for each path. They know about their node, they know about their path via parameters. Then we create a graph representation using JGraphT of that same network. So we'll have vertices and edges. We query the net, the, the JGraphT graph to say, how do I guess best get from one vertex to another? And then we translate it back into our agent based representation and we make our truck agent visit one agent after the other, make it flow through the flowcharts and animate it in free space, not in the network, just animate it in free space so it looks like it's moving through the network. And with this, we now have a fully interactive network, can do whatever we like, we can click on agents, we can um, block things or change characteristics, make them unidirectional, bidirectional, whatever you like. And we have this interactive factor and we have the root finding capability as well. We can change the network any way we like, we can change weights any way we like, whatever.